All life is only a set of pictures in the brain, among which there is no difference betwixt those born of real things and those born of inward dreamings. Seems to be a dream. A ever changing dream. No more can we harbor ourselves safest shores, for there are things that cannot be undone. Dr. Faust, is that you? about to explode. It sounded like it. I found a torch. Mm. Observation notes of the fourth initiation session. All of the participants consumed the the Versailles mixture five minutes ago and they have entered some kind of altered state of consciousness. All of them are now vaguely mumbling in their sleep, like they are chanting something, but the sounds are not conscious. They seem restless. I detect movements in their limbs and, as always, I wonder if it is because of something they are actually seeing beyond. As always, the device is humming and glowing, but this time the atmosphere is different to the previous ses sessions. Whatever the reason for this may be, it feels almost like that fantastic device is signaling something in a code I don't recognize. It is becoming more and more stressful to be alone here, in the midst of this cold, dim and incense-filled room. It sounds to me like the intensity of the subject's mumblings is much stronger now. Colors and shades are dancing on the walls with the rhythmic ins and outs of the device. I can hear the wind howling outside. Maybe a snowstorm is approaching, or something even worse. Exactly five minutes and three seconds have passed now. They have drifted beyond my area of expertise and guidance. I cannot do anything further except wish for their safe return. Return from where? Expedition handbook? That's one. Shamanism. Anybody here? Where is everybody? Indeed. This device, 
Its noises are resonating in my mind. This device. Its noises are resonating in my mind. Meeting room. Locked. Looks like we're having a power problem right now. What a notice. Supervisor Nikolai Hansen. Explanations. Expected snowstorm. A snowstorm is expected to hit for the next two weeks. It is of utmost importance to take all cautionary measures and inform all responsible personnel when going outside. Please be aware that the radio connection between the base and the ship may not be available during this period. Uproot Expedition Wheeler. Some weird compass again. Familiar visits in the lower chambers once more in the form of a black cat. Its spectral image echoes throughout the seven rooms. What sin called it out from its hollow, looming, dim, and ghost like? either locked or stuck. Okay, we don't need anything. Mm, again, the weather notice. Health notice. Supervisor, your hand away. Attention crew members who are having problems sleeping. Examinations conducted regarding the increase of accidents recently led me to believe that the reason behind them is some kind of intense cabin fever. Symptoms for this problem are insomnia, severe headaches, seeing visions or hearing voices. Crew members who are suffering from the above symptoms are required to refer to me personally for a thorough checkup. This will also be the main topic of the general meeting that will be held tomorrow after lunch. This issue poses serious problems regarding safety at work, so it must be taken heed of so soberly. Medical practitioner. Stop those bloody sessions. Um. We are wearing proper clothes. Let's see if we can check out this room. Yes, we can. For whatever it's worth. Um, auxiliary power needs to be enabled manually from outside. Okay, that explains that. We do need to go outside. Successful establishment of the Upper Water Antarctic base. And after that, nothing is clear in my mind. Mm. Okay, 
doesn't seem to be locked. Stuck. Wait. That looks like a generator. This hose was tampered with. It was. Jerry can is it full? It is. This hose was tampered with. Mm, oh. And the first aid kit was empty. Locked. Uh, First tool of any engineer tactic. Seems like it hasn't been two weeks since we have. Is it still a snowstorm going on? Now, is there anything else we need to do here? I don't think so. I hope we don't have to. Uh. This is still working. Is that here before? Radio room. Upward Expedition Base. Pequod, please come in. I repeat, this is Upward Expedition Base. Pequod, do you hear me? There is someone who can hear me. Please, come in. Some electrical condition in the disturbed air seems to prevent communication. Hmm. For a while, my nights have been plagued by bizarre nightmares wherein I have been ta talking to an un unsubstantial figure. When I wake up every morning, I fail to remember either his visage or the content of dialogue. Only his silhouette talking in a somber tone. These nightmares keep me from sleeping comfortably, the kind of sleep I am longing for. I haven't mentioned this to anybody yet, but I am feeling a constant urge to do so as if my well-being is in the balance. It would be most logical to consult with Dr. DeWitt about this. It would be. I 
a Puerto Antarctic expedition, statement of consent. By signing this document, you are agreeing to the terms written below. False statements made knowingly or willfully, including affidavits or other supporting documents submitted therewith, may be punishable. I hereby declare that I consent to perform my daily duties to the best of my ability, listen to the judgment of the expedition leader, Dr. Faust, and participate in a series of medical sessions as needed at the Upuat Antarctic base. The risks of participating in the aforementioned medical sessions have been fully explained to me. Any questions I have regarding the procedure, why it is necessary, its benefits and risks have been answered to my satisfaction. Therefore, I give my informed consent to the performance of the procedure by signing the statement of consent. Even doctors have to sign it, which is interesting. We just keep it closed. Mm, on psychoactive plants, Sahiti and Diverge. Members awaken without any problem, except for Frank Gilman. All of a sudden, his heart ceased beating at around 1.45 a.m. He was extremely cold and there was no detectable pulse. While I was preparing to perform cardiac compression, he momentarily opened his eyes. I am unsure how much time passed since his heart failed to beat, but it can be have been more than five minutes. And then came the event that shook us all. The calls was the very words Frank uttered directly to Dr. Faust right after he awakened. I don't know how to explain it because his voice was muffled and almost indiscernible, but I am convinced that the voice I heard did not belong to Frank. As a medical doctor, I can say that this is not completely impossible for someone in his condition, but there was something wrong with what I heard. It was a sound that no human vocal cords could produce. First. Oh, it smells awful in here. Looks awful as well. It's oh. stuck. Well, that makes sense. It's hmm. stuck. is the most awful torch I have ever used. It won't open. Yes, it won't open. Um, quarters. Now accessible. Locked. Locked. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? The portrait. Nikolai Gogol. It's locked. Hmm. Nedwell is out. <laughs> what are those? Hmm. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? Hmm. Locked. So I know that at least two people should be here. Anderson and Hansen. Ok, 
human plants of great antiquity. It's stuck. Um, isn't it even plugged in? No, it is. After our haphazard and momentary aerial exploration of the unholy, utterly alien, cycloplane maze of square, curved, and angled blocks, we could detect most of the locations revealed by the previous Miskatonic University expedition leader, the Professor Emeritus William Dyer. But what we are looking for is not there. Inside the haunted shock of ruins, According to various sources, it should be in the much older ruins beyond the Elder City, right on the edge of a mountain beyond the Mountains of Madness. It was built over a location deeply shunned even by the Elder Fangs, and built long before the colossal city Dr. Dyer and his team explored. Now we set foot upon lands no one has ever seen before, a vast mass of dry land around the South Pole, which rose from the primal waters of the old ones, seeped down from the stars. A place so evil, most of the arcane sources hesitated to record it at all, whilst some murals within the elder city depicted it with obvious repugnance and trepidation. <laughs> so many... <laughs> relations. Generated voices outputted to speakers, incoming power needs to be regulated. Main feed input, backside. Auditory and visual data are fed to the main system by the primary filters. Is it really possible to feed the machine with an actual brain? Ancient sources speak too secretively about this. Based on the writings of R. Bacon and Wolfgang von Kempelen, I will try to improve the machine. I know we're close to what we have been looking for. During the adaptation sessions we hold here in the meeting room, I feel the guidance of some sort. Something pointing towards the destination we seek. This could mean we are now in sync with the ancient source. The wearable conarium we're carrying on our left arms connects and does receive sensations from the same ancient source. And sometimes I wonder whether there has ever been another soul during humanity's relatively brief period of existence, was able to achieve such a feat. Within some shunned and elusive sources I have gathered from around the world, it is said that the extraterrestrial species, the Elder Fang race, built it after passing through a stage of mechanized life on other planets, but its purpose remains unclear. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.